Okay. I think we're live. What's up, everybody? Now, I know this is kind of late and uh, kind of last minute, but um, I just wanted to get on here, test out the uh, equipment out here in the shop with my double camera set up. Oh, shit. Whoops. Um, I guess I got to mute that. Um, so I pay every month for StreamYard, like $49 or something like that. And I don't even use it. Uh, so I'm going to actually start doing more live streams and, um, try to answer some of the questions like, uh, live. Uh, I know I've been slacking on the questions on the channel, man, but it's getting, that's becoming like a full-time job, actually. Uh, I try to keep up with that, but man, uh, the more subscribers, the more of them questions keep coming in or the comments. And um, not only like on the new videos, but I just get a slew of questions on some of my older videos. So every day, you know, there could be anywhere from 40, 50, 60. If I drop a video, there's going to be like 100 questions. And uh, that's kind of... Um, tough to keep up with sometimes what's up everybody um george william uh all you guys so what i'm going to do here today i have this piece of equipment that you can see over here in this um other camera it came from a um a stadium and i, I believe it has something to do with the lighting uh, I took one apart years ago, and it was just chocked full of uh, copper and aluminum. I, like, the whole housing is aluminum. So, I figured I'd get on here, do a live stream, do some, uh, I guess you would consider that micro-scrapping. Um, but, we'll see what we can get out of it. Hello from Newfoundland, Canada. What's up, man? Chris Jones. Yeah, it is a full time job. YouTube is like a whole nother job. I'm actually trying to find like, you know, I got an editor, which is awesome. And uh, they're doing a great job when I can get the. Uh, um, when I get the videos to them. Um, let's see what we got here. You need to check some mobile MRI companies. Yeah, I'm going to start looking into that. Um, I'm actually trying to set up um, to do some sales to bring in more customers. But I, I there's a couple things I want to do before I, I do that. Um, so. This is just uh, this is just from one of my regular customers. This is actually. The third one of these that I've gotten, I have another one over here that I was going to do a live stream with probably uh, maybe six months ago. And then I got a newer one in. So we're going to test out this camera and um, see, uh, see how it goes. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to um, navigate some things over here real quick. Uh, like I said, I pay for this stream yard so that I can do high definition streams and um, I can run two cameras. You actually have to pay like for an upgraded service to run two cameras. And uh, I'm trying to figure out um, how to do like, um, is my mic coming in hot? Let me turn it down. It's coming in hot in my uh, earphones here. I, I want to bring people on here and have a discussion. Plus, I got this for my other channel, which I have a couple uh, videos. I, um, I shot one, but I had an issue with the audio um, because I, I didn't have the upgraded StreamYard or I was using my other account or something like that. But I, 
it just was messed up. I had to scrap the whole thing. So I need to actually, um, yeah, micro breaking stuff. <laughs> yeah, we're good at breaking stuff over here. Um, how am I doing? I'm doing pretty good. Can't complain, man. Uh, Flint, Michigan. What's up, Henry? The audio is crisp. Sweet. Now, I don't know um, how it's going to sound like when I move over there, but there's a button back here. Let's see. If this button, I can change this mic, the parameters, if I'm going to do two people or if I'm going to record the whole room. I don't know if I'm going to mess with that stuff, but I'll just probably bring the mic closer and I'll try to remember to talk into the mic because it is set up directional right now. Um, so I'm going to get right into this. I'm going to make this bigger. And uh, let me put my mic over here. I don't know how this is going to sound with the, um, the drill going. But this is a, uh, a power supply for lighting. And uh, it has 20 amps, 208, 240, and then it's pumping out 50 to 100 amps, 20 to 30 volts DC. And uh, first time I took one of these apart, I thought it was pretty interesting. Lots of Phillips screws. I don't know what that is, but we already getting into some big cables here. And of course, got my favorite screws up there, some flatheads. And it's got some sticky stuff on it. Let's see if I can't find a flathead real quick. I probably should have. Uh, Prep my tools a little better. Every time I get a flathead, I wind up losing it or breaking it. Um, oh, I am prepared. It's already on another drill. Okay. We got a spinner. And I just don't, for the life of me, understand why anyone would want to continue putting these flatheads out. I think we should come together and, like, petition to have them banned. I think we've evolved past the flathead screw. Okay. Got a big nugget on there. Probably going to need some Allen keys. Nope. Nope. You know what I got? I literally just want the tractor supply. Hold on one second. Last time I was there, I bought a big set of Allen keys. And then I was there the other day and I got a small set to complement it. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I'm like a tool of hauler. Even if I don't need it right now, um, if I see a tool that's pretty cool, I got a hard time passing it up. There we go.
Remember that uh, I had some SO cable in here a while back, like a big spool of it with all the little pins. This is probably what it was for. So that whole thing's aluminum. It looks like it's got brass in there. And a um, nice little chunk of copper. And more flatheads back there. All right. We're just going to open up this whole panel and get to the meat and potatoes of this thing. You should have seen, uh, I was on site at a police station. You'll see the video coming up soon. We were taking apart this massive electrical gear. And the guys, you know, to me, they seem like hourly guys. Uh, but I was taking this stuff apart, like zip, 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 zip. And they were just like, one, two. I thought it was kind of funny. Uh, look at all this stuff. Just loaded with copper. We got transformer, decent sized one there, bunch of little ones over here. Looks like a huge heat sink, some extruded aluminum. And unfortunately, looks like a ton of flathead screws. Go ahead and just uh, zip these panels off real quick. Oh no. Jeez. Okay. Why? Maybe this wasn't such a good idea. I'm seeing tons of flatheads. You guys are going to see me struggle with these flatheads. <laughs> oh, I like these little fans. I wonder what the voltage is on them. I just recovered a bunch of these the other day. But they were 24 volt DC. Oh, here we go. Single phase. Oh, no way. These are 110 volts. These are perfect. And they got some small, my flathead not even fitting in there. So I have um, a Uh, oil cooler for my uh, that I want to put on my hydraulic thing for my jaw. Here we go. 115 volt AC, single phase, 0.21 amps, made in Thailand. That's awesome. We'll definitely keep those. Um, anyway, I, I have an oil cooler I want to put some fans on. And I also, these might be better for my stereo. Now, I create a lot of dust in the shop. So my stereo, I put like a filter on it so dust don't get down in it. I feel like I need to be blowing air um, through it. So we're going to set something up. I think these fans here will be perfect for that situation. All right. Let's see what we got. 
we got a bolt. Always some weirdness. All unscrewed, and then one random bolt. It's going to hold everything up. I can't find my driver. There we go. Oh. I was prepared again. It's on this other one. We can get a better idea of what's going on here. All that. So we got a computer board. They don't look like gold fingers, but we got a huge piece of extrusion. Little transformers. All right. Some nice number two copper in here. Flatheads. See, I'll keep this little, uh, This little junction thing. If I can get it out, it's got flat heads. What looks like either dielectric grease or um, I think it's dielectric grease. Yeah. See, this is the kind of stuff I was looking for. It's like brand new. So I always like, you know, building and repurposing stuff. Stuff like this is gold to me. And I bet someone that has a better knowledge of like electronics would find all kinds of good stuff in here. Nice chunks of uh, uh, that's borderline, but I'm gonna say that's number two. And then we got copper transformer, nice and heavy, big old chunk right there. This stuff, I could almost throw that. I mean. It's got that paper on it. I got to buy myself a new fillet knife. I broke my fillet knife. Um, but that could be either stripped down or, or cooked off. I'm going to be doing a video here soon on the uh, incinerator. We're going to fire it up and uh, see how hot we can actually get it. I was looking at the uh, tons of nice little chunks of number two copper in here. So I was looking at the burners, another nice heavy transformer, and um, it's their oil burner. So what I'm thinking is, this looks like stainless. I'm thinking I can um, modify it or even hot rod it up a little bit to increase the temperature and change out. Change out the um, everything's aluminum. 
I haven't found one piece of steel yet. Okay. Let me take a break here and see what uh see see what's going on in the comments. Let me see if I can't get there we go. I'm still trying to figure this out. Um You can't even hear the drill. A Florida man. Hi from Hollywood, Florida. Hey, I used to live in Hollywood. Let me, let me see. Let me get back on the mic here. I'll check this out. My editor bought this for me for Christmas. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Okay. Uh, let's see where we're at. I'll try to, I'll try to answer all these, any questions y'all got. Um, try not to scrap the mic when you are working fast. <laughs> yeah, I got to watch. I got a slew of wires over here. I got to watch. I make sure I don't pinch them or whatever. Um, Hello from Newport, Oregon. What's up, buddy? Adam. Um, oh, I don't know. I think it was a dude named, sorry if I butcher your name, Adam, or I'm horrible at what names. Like, you could literally tell me your name, and before you even finish telling me your name, I already forgot it. I'm, I'm that way with names and birthdays, man. I don't even, I don't remember anyone's birthday half the time, not even my own. Um, but. I want to say it was a guy named Adam that sent me them gloves. If not, I'm sorry. But anyway, the guy that sent me them gloves. Oh, they're right here. That whole box of gloves. These things. Man, them things are awesome. We've been putting them things to work. Um, John from uh, Midwest, Minnesota. What's up, buddy? Nice junk from Alberta, Canada. What's up, man? I always see you in the comments. What what's this you're scrapping? Uh Jay Walter. Uh it's some type of um lighting for a, a hockey arena. Something something to do with their they got a um they got a massive uh lighting thing going on over there. Um Flatheads are the enemies of scrappers. Yes, they're a nightmare, man. <laughs> I, I don't understand why they still use them. A bigger hammer? Yeah, we should definitely... Uh, well, I'm trying to recover some of this stuff out of here. I think so far, uh, that's probably all I'm going to recover is that little electrical connection and the, and, um, the fans. That I'll actually repurpose. Um, get out the jaws of life, Billy Junk and Pool. What's up, man? Uh, yeah, man, that thing would make quick work of it. It would make a mess. You need to go to Tools Anonymous. Yeah, I got a serious problem, man. Um, and you know what's crazy? I wind up getting like, Someone will have uh, want me to help them move or do a, a clean out. Um, um, and I'll get boxes of tools. Like, no lie. I think I'm going to do a video on my hand tools. Um, and then, because I, I literally have like buckets of sockets, wrenches, uh, pliers. And I got to kind of organize this stuff. And then, like I said, in a couple of videos, I have just buckets and bins and boxes of tools up there. Uh, and half the stuff, I don't even know where it came from. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to do a video on that because I've, I've been wanting for a while to do a video on what I think um, a scrapper 
like must have tools for a scrapper, you know, and then I'll show, you know, like all, all of my tools. And, um, then some of the tools that are on my wish list, which I have, I've had a tool on my wish list for a while now. And then a company just sent me one, actually a pretty expensive tool too. Um, we did a little, you'll see it coming up in a video where I had some massive transformers. Okay. Literally one of them was the biggest copper transformer I've ever had. And I've had a bunch of 1500 pound transformers before. Um, and it was not easy getting these things. Um, what else we got? The mic has a sound filter removing out all non voice sounds. Really? Yeah, I'm not. I mean, this thing's got a lot of cool stuff. Um, I bought it a while ago and I don't use it as much as I want to. Um, I don't know why you didn't get a notification. I accidentally hit the set the stream up by accident. I wasn't even ready. So it might have messed it up because I went and deleted it. Electronic scrapper, more live streams. Yeah, actually, where's my, um, let me see here. I have to see, I, I'm going to do a live stream every time I hit a thousand subscribers. And I think I'm there or we're within, um, We're, let's see here. We got to be really close. Um, whoops. I'm kind of uh, computer illiterate. Oh, uh, we're literally two subscribers away from hitting 35,000. So if you guys are on here watching and you ain't subscribed, man, hit that subscribe button. Maybe, maybe we'll hit that goal. Let me see. I got to open up a whole another. I want to keep that. Oh, shoot. Um, Man, we might be able to hit that goal tonight. I'm just going to open up a new tab. No, no, that's not what I wanted. I want to open up a new window and keep that in the corner. And let's see if we can get 35,000 in this stream. Oh, no way. Did we just hit it? No way. Hold on. Hold on. Haha, <laughs> 35,000 and one subscriber. That's awesome. Dag. Well, I just like to uh, say thank you for all of the subscribers, but the last three that just uh, subscribed, that's awesome. So this, this uh, live stream was right on time. Um, let me see. I'm going to put up. I, I don't know if I can show that. I think I can do it with this other camera. One thing I haven't figured out how to do is... Um, screen share um and i'm gonna i'm gonna start getting on this um stream yard more often anyway we hit thirty five thousand just literally just now while i was talking that's freaking awesome uh okay so i don't need that open anymore yeah i appreciate everybody that subscribes to this channel it really does help out and um all right here we go And the, the comments, man, um, the last like two months, really, it, it's been getting harder for me to answer all the questions because, man, they're coming in hot and heavy. And um, like before I would sit down, like maybe knock like an hour and just knock them all out. But it's like it's more than that now. It's getting it's getting um, hard to keep up with that. I try and I I. I appreciate all the comments. Please keep making the comments because I do scroll through and read them pretty quick. Um, and I try, I'll try to um, catch up on them. 
but it is definitely getting a little harder to answer every single one, especially like you have no idea how many times I've answered the question, where do you get all the copper from? You know, I've must have answered that question 5,000 times over the past three years. Um, and that's like one of the main questions I get on like a lot of the older videos. Um, I, I'm still getting tons of questions from two and three years ago. So um, what else we got here? Someone's getting meatloaf and pizzas. And pizzas. I had pizza last night, man. That's one of my, that's like kryptonite to me. <laughs> Uh, I'm amazed how quiet the, um, uh, you know, what's funny. I did a live stream and I was stripping wire and I thought it was because I was on the other side stripping, but I think it was, um, the mic must take out like that high frequency noise or something like that. I'm more used to the PC case fans um, for like a computer. Ethan Wilson. Oh, we, um, Jay Walter might as well have left, uh, leave this part, like leave the fans bolted to that screen. Um, maybe, but I don't know if I want to put the fans above or below the, um, my stereo that I have. I have like an old school, it's a Yamaha. I think it's a 5,000 watt stereo. I got two Serwin Vega 12 inch. And then I have two 10 inch something logic that I, I literally just put in the shop on the other side because I had all the speakers over here and it was nice if you were working there, but when you're over here, you couldn't hear. And sometimes when I'm in the shop, I listen to um, like audio podcast type, you know, not podcast, but like a YouTube channel that's just audio people talking. And, um, you know, it was hard to hear. Uh, what else we got? Hello from Quebec. I always uh, love your project shop and everything you taught me. That's awesome. I'm glad you learned something from the channel. Um, I got. I think Canada is like. Canada and Australia is like my number two, like United States, obviously, because I'm American is like my number one um, place where my views come from. But I think Canada and um, Australia is, is up in there. I use connections like that from an air conditioner to connect wires in my solar setup. Yeah, that's awesome. Man, anytime you can repurpose stuff, especially nowadays with how expensive everything is. Um, like I went to Home Depot the other day. I forget what I even went there for. It was something stupid. I wind up walking out spending over $100. And you're you're looking at like two little bags of nothing. Same thing going into the, um, the grocery store. It's hard to recover food, but... Um, I think that's something we as a people need to work on is uh, the food, because you know what? We kind of live in a magical place where, um, you know, you can put a seed in the ground. Rain will fall from the sky and food will grow. So there really shouldn't be a food shortage or people being hungry and food should not be as expensive as it is. You know, I think about stuff like that. It's like, you know, we think we're the most technologically advanced civilization that ever lived. I think that's a huge crock of crap. Um, 
One, because we're the only living beings uh, on this earth that pay to live. We have to pay to be here, you know? We have to pay for housing. Animals, we look at animals like, oh, they're dumb animals. Yeah, but they're not paying to live, you know? They figured it out. <laughs> we haven't figured it out yet. You know, look at this shop I, I pay for just to work. You know, it costs me $4,300 a month just so I can work, you know? Uh, so, and food, we got that all wrong. Look at this. Uh, I look at all the parks and even the schools with all these huge fields. The number one thing you should be taught in school is how to feed yourself. That's like the most important thing ever. You know, without feeding yourself, you know, you could die. You know what I'm saying? You could do it with a lot of things, but you can't do it without food and water. So um, we got our priorities messed up. Um, did you call the guy with the place for sale? Yeah, I did. And I couldn't get a hold of the dude like it. Um, um, I don't know what the deal was. I'll have to call him again. Um, but there wasn't nothing. Um, I couldn't get a hold of him. So, and the sign's been up there forever. So I don't know if they sold it already, but, or, but I don't know. But that place would be awesome. It's literally right next to a scrapyard. So um, I could actually be like open for business. Because where I'm not at right now, you know, if you're going to run a recycling center, you got to be in a, a specifically zoned area. I don't think I'm, this place is zoned. That's why I don't have my doors open to the public, you know, which is kind of like holding me back in a way. But I don't know if I want a bunch of random people showing up over here anyway. Um, hello, Big D. What's up? Uh, good evening from Canadian Forces Base, Kingston, Ontario. That's pretty cool. Hello from West Texas. Hey, Derek, I hope I wasn't too much of a bother on that suggestion of felt. Felt you on your milling machine. That was not my intention. Love your channel. No, man, I don't care. Dude, you <laughs> listen, man, I don't get offended. People, everybody's got their own opinion. And, um, you know, um, it doesn't bother me. I like the, I like constructive criticism. I like suggestions. You know what I'm saying? That's why, like, I always say, even if I don't respond to the comments now, I'm going to read them and look at them and, you know, take something. What do you do? What do you have for shop safety today? Um, SIG 45. And right at the end of that table is a 12 gauge shotgun uh, because I do have my doors open. I have to have a little breeze come through here. Otherwise, it gets a little hot. You know, we always stay safe around here. A.W., <laughs> I'm the one who sent you your gloves. Yes, Adam. Okay, good. Uh, thank you, man. Those, uh, those oil rig gloves, man, those are pretty badass. They're a little thicker than the ones I used to use for the transformer press. Um, but they, they're amazing for like everything. Any of you, I ran, I think I ran them on the press the other day. They're just, you know, once you wear them in they're they're, they're nice. I really did appreciate that, man. Um, when are you and Steve starting the forklift build? Very soon. Actually, if you look behind me, oh, it's covered up. We were in here sandblasting the other day, some parts. You'll see a video on that. We were doing some sandblasting and powder coating. Um, that thing needs to be sandblasted and powder coat. And one of the reasons I haven't done it is I didn't have a proper air compressor in here. Over here, see in the corner there, I have a badass air compressor. It's a seven and a half horsepower Ingersoll Rand TS-10, which will do anything you want really, but it's three phase and I don't have three phase. I do have a huge three phase converter, but I don't have enough amps coming in this shop. I only have a hundred amp service that 50 horse three phase converter takes a hundred amps just to start. I need like a 25 amp converter or 
I need to buy a very expensive seven and a half horse single phase motor for it. But I literally, you'll see a video coming up on that too. Uh, one of my customers gave me a tank with a motor on it. You've seen me fire up that five horse motor in the shop. And then he calls me up. He goes, hey, man, I got two more compressors for you. Come get them with a bunch of other stuff. I've got one of them running. The other one's uh, to be determined whether it's going to work. I think the, it doesn't sound like the pump has compression. But um, what I plan on doing is linking them together and then using that third tank so they can both fill up that third tank. and We can have some volume because we. I'm going to pressure clean that whole thing. I'm going to paint the frame, paint the cage the upright or the uh the mast whatever you call that um and then there's some of the smaller parts like for the motor and anything i can fit in our little our little oven which you'll see me and steve were powder coating some ford lightning parts the other day um uh, we're going to be doing some powder coating and i'm i'm i have like a tent um uh, that we're going to set up out back so i can use the uh big uh, sandblaster. Um, so yeah, we're, we're going to get on that. Let's see what else we got here. Um, can't wait to see what that incinerator could do. I almost had it sold. I got it for sale right now for five grand. It's $37,000 for that thing. New. It's only a six year old unit. Um, just like everything else, man, every time I try to sell something, I get a bunch of bullshit. I, I haven't even gotten no response on that because it's such an oddball thing. Now, I don't know anybody that could, what they would even do with it. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I think what I'm going to do is pull the burners off and we're either going to mess with them. I, I was looking at them. We can adjust the air. There's a way to adjust the air and the possibly the nozzle. And then we might just inject some propane, you know, kind of almost like putting a nitrous shot on a car and uh, we'll burn waste oil. Um, I need to set up a, a waste oil processor anyway, filter it down. And uh, then I can have because they're oil burners, you know, I don't think it matters what type of oil you put in them. Um, I can have oil for the incinerator. And oil for my truck and burn some free fuel. I had a guy today. He was uh, the guy got them giant staters was over here today. Oh, excuse me. And um, we uh, we were talking. I was showing him and he was like, man, he calls them back ends, you know, uh, on the generators. He was like, man, you can burn some big back ends in here. <laughs> uh, Terry here from Tennessee. What's up? Um, let's see. Tina from uh near Daytona. What's up, Tina? Yeah, I go up that way once in a while and do some scrapping. Have you considered a hammer mill? Yes. Um, I actually had one a while ago. It was a homemade one with chains, but that was right before I started YouTube. You know it's crazy. I I should have started YouTube. Um when I, I got my last shop, I probably would have stayed in the shop if I had more revenue coming in during that COVID bull crap. Um, you know, let's see. I'm the guy who sent the design for splitting wedges on your stator stripper. Any chances on that? Uh, did you email them to me? I get, uh, I might have looked at them. Are you the one that like hand drew the stuff and sent it to me? I get a lot of emails. Sometimes that's even hard to keep up with. Um, let's see. 1500 pound transformer. Yeah. The one I broke down in here, I'll just tell you, we got over 700 pounds of copper out of one transformer. Big boys. Uh, that was some crazy stuff. I'm a dog walker and I was returning a dog to one of my clients and he was drunk and he told me that his wife, I was a dog fart chimp and seven or five are my favorite numbers. Oh, okay. Oh, someone asked about your name. 
Uh, you mentioned in one of your videos that you needed to move and had the building you want right next to the scrap yard. How's that going? Um, yeah, I do want to move out of this place because it's it's too small and too expensive. But that building, I mean, we're talking about <laughs> that building is probably well over a million dollars for that space. That you know, West Palm Beach is not cheap to live in. Um, so I don't know. I, I called the guy. I was, you know, I actually bought my, you know, the trailer I have with the crane. I bought my trailer from the guy. And I used to buy used motor oil from the dude, but he was old. I don't know if he's even still around or why he shut down that business. Um, I do curb scavenging and can't find a tool. I don't put in my car. Yeah, man. I don't care if it's like a an old screwdriver, man. I'm gonna put it in a put it somewhere. Hey, bro, do a video splitting a stator with an electric 16-ton boss wood splitter? Uh, I don't have a wood splitter. You know, this is South Florida. We don't have many of them. I did buy one years ago to do the, um, um, the second press. I was going to take it apart, but I, I wind up actually trading the wood splitter for that Woden vice I have over there. Um, Make sure to like the live stream. Thanks, Brian. AW, thanks for the uh, congrats on the 35K. Where's Tonto? Steve? Steve was here earlier. He's out there um, putting a starter on something. Uh, we went out and had, had dinner, and then he had to go. Uh, let's see. How old is your channel? Man, I think it's going on four years. And, you know, it took me a year to get monetized. It took me a year to get a thousand subscribers. That's because I was kind of all over with my content. And I didn't, um, I wasn't for, uh, putting out a lot of videos. Thirty-five k pizza party? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh you have a really good platform to be able to test drills impacts and bits i don't know anyone else that deals with uh that volume of screws one trailer light might be 1k screws one trailer of light might be 1k in screws yeah yeah, man, I go through a lot of um, tips, bits, you know. But, like, for scrapping, I pretty much have, like, a set of Harbor Freight sockets. Not their, not their bits, though. Like, the uh, Phillips and stuff that I use, I usually get, like, DeWalt or uh, Milwaukee or whatever's at Home Depot. Because there's, I'm telling you, there are some things you just don't buy at Harbor Freight. But um, some things like sockets and wrenches, I've never broken one. You know, I have some impact wrenches and stuff like that. Uh, some of the better tools that I have, I keep in my other toolbox. I use them when I'm working on my truck or my car because I don't want to be, um, I don't want to be uh, stripping stuff. You know, with the scrap, it's really not a big deal because I'm a brute, man. I'll just, you know, <laughs> I'll just beat it out or break it, cut it, burn it, whatever. We'll, we'll get the copper out one way or the other. Um, yeah, actually, um, I might do a video on that. Yeah, I think, like I said earlier in the stream, I, I might do a video on all the tools I use and what I think a scrapper should have. And I'll, I'll show the bits I like to use. And uh, there's different, I mean, I, I have a bunch of different stuff that I've specifically used for those lights because I've taken apart thousands of them. And they're pretty much the same, except there is variations, but you, you there's definitely certain things that you want that are going to make your life a lot. Like when I was removing them big transformers, 
you know, I, I got called to show up to move these big cabinets. I didn't even know what they were. So all, you'll see in the video, all I brought was a pallet jack and uh, some wood. So when I got up there and seen what needed to be done, we needed to disassemble these whole things. Now, what you're going to see in the video isn't even close to what we started at. We were in a secure area and uh, I probably wasn't supposed to be filming in there. So I kind of discreetly got you guys some, some footage inside the room. Um, but what we started with was insane. The amount of stuff that was on it. And the guy kind of screwed me. He took some of the stuff that was supposed to go with me. Um, but whatever I'm, I made out. Okay. For, for, uh, two days worth of work one day there and then one day process in the transformers you'll see it was it was pretty nice um but the tools that the actual electrician had i'm like i kept asking him, hey you got this you got that you got that and I, I thought to myself man you know if they're doing this stuff every day why wouldn't they have this tool or that tool it's because i'm geared up for taking stuff apart as fast as possible you know what i'm saying they're geared up to be an hourly worker you know what i'm saying um they're not tearing down shit like i would and even when i was there and i i took their i took kind of took control of the job and took their drills and was like just tearing shit apart there was literally shit flying in that room man it was crazy um let's see what we got here what's the name of your other channel i started the video you posted but haven't finished it um the free human project and it sucks I, I shot a whole video that i was going to drop and the audio was crap man i don't know what happened uh, if i sent you a razor and scissors would you cut your hair probably not i literally broke up with a girlfriend because she kept ha hassling me about shaving or cutting and listen man you ain't gonna tell me what to do <laughs> When are you going to do some micro scrapping? Uh, right here in a second, I'm going to get back on this thing. Wood splitter for staters, it works. Yeah, I've seen a couple of videos that people had in. Flathead should have gone away with the horse and buggy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my yard gives me more money for computer cases because it's a special kind of sheet like sheet steel what kind of i wonder if it's like transformer steel you know transformer steel is actually called silica steel it's like a magnetic steel it's got a, a higher magnetic property than regular steel and you're supposed to get more money for it but i haven't found anyone that'll pay me unless i have like 10 tons i think you got to have twenty thousand pounds to get that silica steel price because nobody really deals with it on a scale um someone already made 800 plus scrapping hey man that's all right you make that in a day greetings from germany that's what's up I love your other channel. Are you making videos soon? Yes, I got to reshoot one. And then on that on that channel, I'm going to start doing live streams. Now, I don't know. Uh, does anyone know what the threshold you got to make before you go live on a new channel? Like I don't have, I'm not monetized over there yet. So I don't know if I can even do a live stream, but I'd like to do live and bring people on. Um, I got a couple people I want to bring on. I'd like for you guys to get on there and let's just have some discussions and talk some stuff out. Uh, Tristan, hey, thanks for sending me a cut. I haven't sent it out yet, but I do have a um, thousand watt transformer that I saved. Um, I have a mailbox that I go to like once a week for my mail. When I go out there, I'll send it out. My husband loves your videos. He loves cheesesteaks, pizza, and strombolis. 
Haha, <laughs> say hi. Lou. What's up, Lou? Yeah, man, I'm from I'm originally from South Jersey, so cheesesteaks and pizza is what I grew up with. <laughs> oh. J uh What's the heaviest piece of copper I've ever had? Hmm. Like a single piece? I don't know. That's an interesting question. Um, I mean, it might be them coils I just cut. What's up, Silverlicious? I, uh, that guy helps me out with my streams. I, I kind of decided to do this on a whim. Um, on three phase, have you considered a VDF converter? You can get one from Vivor for about a hundred dollars. Convert single phase to three phase, and you can change the speed of your motors. Yeah, but um, for a hundred bucks, I'm going to get one that can handle a seven and a half horsepower motor. That's interesting. I'll have to look into that. I know they make the, you know, um, the electronic ones, but I didn't know they could be for like heavy amps. It takes a lot of amps. Now I have a 10 horsepower right over here. I have a 10 horsepower three phase converter. The problem is, um, to fire up that Ingersoll Rand. It's such a hard startup. I talked to a manufacturer of three-phase converters. He's like, that 10 horse ain't going to cut it. You're going to need a 20 minimum. If you know, Better have a 25 to handle the amps of that startup. Do you have any plans for your channel like subscriptions, Patreon, a tip jar, fan mail, merch? Um, yeah, well, I, I need someone to kind of help me with all that stuff because... You know, it's just, a, it's, it's a lot to, uh, it's already a lot what I'm doing. And then all that stuff is just more stuff I got to do. The fan mail, if you look in the description of my videos, I don't know if I put it in this one, but in some of my regular videos, I have, I have the address where you can send fan mail, um, Patreon. See, the stuff like that, why I haven't set that up is you got to like, now I got to make specific content for Patreon people, I guess. I don't know how that works or what it, what it means. I, I feel like it's going to be more work, you know. Um, I don't know what the subscription is. The merch, definitely I want to start selling some merch. I'm looking for, see, I, I, I could easily get on that Spotify or, or whatever YouTube has. Like I could just set it right up and send them some stuff, but I'm not, I'm not looking to send out a bunch of low quality shit, you know, uh, t-shirts that, that I wouldn't wear, you know, I like quality, you know, cotton or, you know, something that's not going to be ruined after one or two washes. I was looking for an American made company that was, that could do it, but they're expensive. And, um, you know, I, I don't know. I'm looking into it, though. It's definitely on the list. I have a, a vision board and uh, merchandise is something that's on there. Plus, um, I have stuff I want to make with the copper in here, which we're going to be doing real soon. Uh, someone was supposed to send me a, a kiln. I originally bought this kiln right behind me right here to try to melt some copper, but it didn't get hot enough. Now I did find there's different types of coils and I can get a coil that burns hotter or heats up more. I, I saw a video, the guy, he pulled them out and replaced his and was melting copper. So I might go that route with this one right now. I've been using that to just cook staters works fine for that. But even that it takes hours to cook one of them staters off, which I'm going to fire up that incinerator outside and see how that does. 
um, for those staters. Now, in the future here, when I get this stator record right here completely done, 99% of the electric motors, the rotors, the staters, man, I ain't going to need to cook them. That's just not going to not gonna be an issue. Uh, someone from Brazil, Judy Beckner, what's up? Um, my husband's uh, kryptonite is pizza. <laughs> uh, all right, look, um, man, you guys are coming in hot with these questions. Let me, uh, I'm going to get back to taking this thing apart. Let's see what else we can get out of it. <clears throat> and then I'll come back and answer some more questions. You know, I'm always fascinated with um, like electronic stuff, like all the little capacitors and the resistors. We got brass washers, some brass nuts right there. Um, And copper, look at that, copper bolt, that's awesome. That might be a keeper. I should have a goodie bucket out here. Normally when I'm scrapping, uh, I always have like a, a, a goodie bucket for all the, um, the good stuff I like to keep. All right, we're just going to uh, separate some of this stuff. My dice. Oh, um, so you guys know Oliver, the, the Guatemalan kid that worked with me sometimes. So he's actually going to college to become a an electrician. I thought it was kind of cool. But he was, I keep asking him, you know, what do you learn? What'd you learn today? What'd you learn? And they just keep telling him, uh, like, right now they're teaching him about safety and, <laughs> which I think is funny. The fact that he works over here with me. Um, and they're teaching him about tools, what the proper name for certain tools are. Man. So many screws, man. This thing is like overwhelming. I'm just gonna uh and look, man. It seems like they're all freaking flatheads. Or a lot of them. I always think like who figured this stuff out, man? Who figured to put all this crap in here and what it took like before they got to this point, how they would achieve this and like, what the heck is that? This thing looks like a, a giant capacitor. This block here, that definitely looks like a keeper. Nice isolation block, and look at the bottom. The bottom of that is copper. I don't know if uh, that's made in Italy. Put that in the keeper pile. I should probably keep these screws. I have so many buckets of screws. I don't know if my in my lifetime I'll ever get to them, but I have like just bins of hardware and screws that I really need to get to. I literally have a 55 gallon drum that I keep dumping this shit in. Maybe I'll go through it and have like a side business where I can. 
sell hardware. <laughs> Who knows, man? If uh, things keep going the way they are with freaking uh, Joe Biden and how this inflation shit is going, we might be scrounging around for every freaking nut and bolt we can find. A damn damn screw like that might be $20 one day. Who knows? All right, we need an empty. Try to get this stuff off. At least clear the board. This might be it. The biggest capacitor. No. How do they even get that on there? Flat head underneath. Look at that craziness. Another transformer. Well, what is that? You think that's silver solder or something? Nice chunks of copper on there. I wonder if even these little things here have copper in them. Sure got some dust on them. Okay. Making progress. Look at that big boy. 350 volts DC. That sounds like it could kill you. <laughs> All right. Um, I see some more stuff I can recover here. Some keepers. I don't know if I'm just wasting my time keeping this stuff, but it's like, I like building things. And stuff like that. Probably expensive if you had to buy. It. You know, I like to have just shit on the shelves. This was some type of fuse. Breaker. Pull these off. Nice wire. That's a lot of little stuff. Now that is a breaker. There's probably some um, silver contacts in there. Let's see what we got here. That. I think it's the biggest transformer we got. Got a nice chunk of copper. I can feel it. It's got that dense feeling to it. Okay. Now, this might be a keeper. This is a, uh, a context switch, I think. Literally everything on here is bolted down with flatheads. Maybe that's why I never broke the other one down. I literally have it like in a bin over there. Maybe I was having flashbacks of the first time I did it. Freaking 
Flathead gave me nightmares, probably. 50 amp, 600 volts. So this is a, like a, uh, I, I can probably use this as a starter switch. This will do up to a five horse, oh, 15 horse motor. Sweet. That's a keeper. All right, we're getting down to it. See if I can liberate some more stuff here. Of course, that's right in the way. Probably why they throw these out. Nobody wants to get in here and, and maintain anything on this because. It looks like a freaking nightmare. I wonder if this whole thing will come off. Again. Kind of long on here. I don't know if I need this long extension no more. They're great, but sometimes they're a liability. You're trying to maintain your five second or my five second long. I don't know what that is. Looks like it's adjustable, whatever it is. I thought I was gonna have enough cord Bring my laptop over to the um, the uh, stripping table. I want to strip some wire, get closer than I did last time, and I'm going to break down some transformers live. I don't think I've done that yet. So you guys. In real time how fast that shit really goes we just we blew through some the other day that's a nice chunk of uh looks like cast aluminum what do you think those are some type of resistors or something i don't know if i knew more about electronics i could probably make some cool stuff one one thing i want to do when I was a kid, I was told by like my mentor that there's a way to get free energy out of the air and it got nothing to do with solar. We just haven't figured out the antenna yet. And I think about that almost every day. I think we have the stuff we need. We're just not thinking right. Or we weren't taught to think. We were taught to regurgitate information that was fed to us. You know, they don't want us figuring out how to have free energy. God forbid. We were independent. Look at that. Nice piece of aluminum. All right. Now we're getting down into this extrusion. All right. You're like uh, the Joker and Batman. What was that? Batman one, two, when he whipped out that big old revolver. <laughs> Man, I should be like the flathead guru.
Look at all these little flatheads, man. I might keep a couple of these little pieces of aluminum. Here we go. What do you think of that board? Now, it looks like these are bolted on. Now, I know for a fact these things have little copper, little bits of copper. Ah, nice heat sink. I have to clean that up. I'll do that later. You can see where they milled that on a milling machine. Pretty cool. That's a nice chunk right there. And basically duplicate it over here. Another nice chunk. Look at all that. What do you think of that board? Would that be worth anything? I don't see no gold on it. There is a lot of copper. A nice copper bus bar right there. Buried under there. These two transformers. Uh, another little transformer. I'm pretty sure these here have copper backings. Clean this up a little bit. Oh, anyway, like I was saying about Oliver going to college, it was funny they gave him a test on the proper terminology for um, tools. And uh, said a lot of people failed it. Um, and then he was asking me something. I, I pretty much know him, but. Like a sawzall, that was on the test. It's actually a reciprocating saw. Most people failed that. Man, look at this. It's like, like some retro neon clear type insulation. Looks kind of cool. Got some little micro transformers on there. I want to know what these little blue things are. See if I can't open one up. Ah, here we go. My favorite tool. Good old uh, hatchet. Thanks to uh, Canadian treasure hunter. Let's see if we can't. Depopulate the board a little bit. Man, that copper's on there. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about, man. Those are nice. I don't have, um, man, I'm really upset. I had two play knives. I broke one, and I can't find the other one. So unfortunately, we're down to stripping with just the machines, which I guess isn't too bad. Okay, let's see here. I don't know if those are just little capacitors, but it looks like got that foil. 
What else we got? That's actually aluminum. Oh, it's like ceramic, whatever those are. Okay. What else we got? A nugget of copper on there. Got a big flathead. Oh, I probably should be wearing gloves. Ah, stupid flathead. Okay. You don't want to go. Bus bars are on there pretty good. Nice little nugget of copper. Okay. Oh yeah, look at that. That looks like it's got that uh, ferrite. Oh, that's solid. Now I feel that in my hand. Ah, there it is. Nice chunk of copper. Okay. Well, is that worth anything the way that is? <laughs> Holy smoke. Okay. Well, there you have it. That is a some type of lighting control unit power supply deal. Um, cover some keepers where'd they go uh this i'll keep i'm gonna keep these here okay i'm kind of i'm really excited about these 110 fans it's hard to find these fans in 110 volt configuration uh the transformers you know what the deal is with them they're going to go over here over uh these particular ones these ones actually look like they might come apart look at that bam coil ready to go might as well break this one down It's that ferrite stuff. There you go. Nice chunk of copper. We got one more here. This one took a beating. Now this one looks like it's the, uh, yeah. This is the one with the, uh, the E's. I used to call them W's, but they're like that way, then that way. The only way to really get that off is uh, cut the actual coil. Same with this one. This is a coil cutter, but that that's heavy. That's got a nice chunk of copper. This one looks like it's got some plastic, um, plastic things on the bottom. Maybe we can get that off. Looks like it's just got a metal hoop and possibly the same. 
Oh, yeah. Some thick wire coming out of this thing, man. Regional Manufacturing Specialist Inc. Okay. Uh, it does have Bam, look at that. That's a nice little chunk of number two copper. Now, maybe next time I do this, uh, I'll actually weigh this stuff. Like, I should have weighed this before I started. And then uh, seeing what we got out of it, see what this stuff is. Call that depopulated. <laughs> like more capacitors. I'm gonna say that's like aluminum foil or something. Yeah. How about these little discs? Not much going on in there. Okay. Well. There you have that. Made a mess. Did recover some uh, trinkets and some copper, some nice aluminum. Would that be even worth anything anymore? Would it have been worth more with all that stuff on it? Maybe a low grade board? I don't know. I still have a whole barrel full of those gold fingerboards. All right, let's see where we're at here. I think it's raining outside. Okay. We're done with that. Oh, look. I was slinging little tiny transformers. <laughs> They're all over the place. All right. Get some to drink here. Oh, more of these things. Okay. All right. Let's see what we got going on. Where are we at? 228. We'll probably stay on here until uh, do a two hour stream, maybe. See if I can't catch up. Um, What happened to this white crane or power pole machine? White crane. Is that the one I went and picked up with my old landlord? That was a deal I had with him and uh, pretty much everything with that guy went south um, when he started stealing. Uh, what do we got here? Lena Jones, hi. I believe it's a thousand subs to go live. Yeah, I didn't even realize how close I was to the thousand. We were literally three away. And thank you guys for uh, getting me to that threshold. Um, ever wonder how many pounds of metal I've scrapped? Ah, uh, wow. A lot. So in the beginning, I think prepared steel would be the highest percentage of stuff that I scrapped because in the beginning, all I did was, I'd say for the first five years, I've been doing this probably 13, 14 years now. Um, in the beginning, it was strictly HID transformers, man. No fluorescent ballast. Not, I would just literally drive around and pick up. Is that mic coming in hot? Feels like it's kind of loud in my headphones. I would literally just go around picking up transformers all day long um, from 
lighting contractors all over the state, man. I had a nice route going. Uh, it was a good gig for, you know, I'd say the first seven or eight years, you know, it was good. But, you know, after like five years, it started, uh, I started buying more stuff. You know, that's when the LED started coming in. I started buying the, the whole fixtures. Um, and then eventually I started buying copper wire. Um, but I mean, we're talking hundreds of tons, man, of steel. Man, in the beginning, I had a couple guys working for me. I made enough money off of the steel to pay the labor. You know, I'd bring in two tons every, you know, probably twice a week, man. You know, that was, those were good times, man. That that truck sitting out back here, you wouldn't believe how many transformers that thing's hauled. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. Um, and copper wise, man, uh, I've hauled a lot of copper. That's probably my number two thing weight wise that I've, I've hauled tons of it. Um, I don't know what this guy is referring to. Um, fake country box, Alex or fake country boy, Alex. Uh, how long, a uh, long time fan and sub, Great seeing you do so well with the vids recently. Seems like you're really starting to blow up. Yeah, the channel's starting to kick off, man. And that, that's why I'm kind of like, it's, it's getting harder for me to keep up with all the comments, man, because I drop a video. Usually I'll drop a video, hang out for a couple of minutes, and then I got to kind of get back to work. And I'll come back later when I have a chance to um, answer some questions. And it's just, man, there's just so many now. It's crazy. Um, what other channels do I watch? Shannon, uh, asked what other channels do I watch? So I'm pretty much sub to all the scrapping channels. You know, if I see a scrapper in my comments, I'll sub to their channel. I'll go check it out, watch a couple videos, you know, um, you know, to help them out. And, um, but I don't necessarily just sit there and watch mainly scrapping channels. The channels that I like watching more than anything are like machining channels. Like um, some of my favorites are um, Cutting Edge Engineering out of Australia. I love that guy, Curtis. Um, Titans of CNC. I love them dudes. Uh, I watch uh, this old Tony, Inheritance Machining um a couple other ones that i can't remember off off topic um i'm pretty sure if you go to my channel you can see all the channels i'm sub to um but all of, all of the scrap there's so many scrapping channels I, I can't sit there and watch them all but i'll try you know and click through them and see what you guys got going on um you know it's always good to keep up with your competition <laughs> um um but yeah um i like some of the um like i like uh cletus mcfarland he's in uh on the west coast but he's in south florida um race you know race car stuff you know i, I got a I, I got a lead foot i like driving fast that's kind of like my um not i wouldn't say therapy but like my stress reliever you know because i don't I don't drink or do drugs or smoke cigarettes or anything like that. Uh, contrary to what I get a lot of comments thinking that, oh, I must be on meth because I got so much copper, you know, whatever. Those guys that make them comments like that are just ignorant. And uh, people like me and all the other scrapping channels on YouTube probably do more to help the earth and and recover and recycle than most of these people out there even these clowns with these teslas that think they're you know being environmentally friendly how do you think that tesla is getting charged up how much lithium for them batteries was mined by slave labor or material had to be you know diesel had to be burnt to mine that stuff you know what i'm saying so you know 
people like us scrappers, even a guy driving around in a pickup truck every day, uh, we're doing more for this earth than most people. <laughs> um, let's see what we have here. Uh, why is a granulator needed? Uh, well, you really don't need it. I, I like it because, um, you know, I get a lot of spaghetti wire and it's just tedious to strip, man. If you can get a good price for your copper chops and clean them good, um, it, it's more efficient, I think, to run it through a granulator if you have like a pre-shredder. So back when I was running my granulator a lot, I would I had a cable cutter literally bolted to my bench and I would grab a knot of that spaghetti and I would just start shredding it into like half inch pieces because what I found about the granulator the literally the smaller the piece that you can feed into it the fast if you just threw a big knot like a bird nest down in there you could clog it up and or it it takes longer for it to clean out you know uh, so one thing I want to do is run a pre shredder and it's just a time thing. And for me, I have some things I want to do um, with the granulates. I want to use it to, that's what I want to use to melt and make my products that I want to sell. I want to be able to offer selling clean chops to people. I know there's, um, I think it's Boca Mint. The guy, uh, a guy from Boca Raton down south from me, he's constantly um was asking about if i had any chops for sale um and i'll tell you what i used to run the granulator my main stripper and then my homemade stripper all at the same time i have all three machines running i had one guy prepping my wire for me like i, I would have a saw horse and he would just be laying the wire over the saw horse stretching it out and i would be feeding solid core i'd be feeding the stranded through the big machine the solid core through my homemade machine and then um, uh, all the small spaghetti wire through the granular. And we would just keep running them until there was no wire left. The granulator is only going to be able to feed so much dependent on your size. So, you know, if we ran out of big wire, I would adjust the machines down to the smaller size. We would keep stripping. Uh, you're you're going to get more money for bright and shiny wire than the granulates i don't know why but or at least that's what it was when i was selling it um but just feeding all three machines until there's no wire left the granulate granulator just helps it so much so much uh um it definitely helps uh you know be it more efficient let's see here uh have have you started looking into potentially buying land to build or buying a rundown warehouse? Yeah, I do, man. But man, South Florida is so expensive. I have to go out like way West. And um, most of my customers are close to 95 and I like being next to uh, 95. Um, so I guess I'm going to have to make that decision. Um, I saw a video explaining the almost 5k a month rent would. Yeah, it is crazy. You know, it's 4300 here. I rent some place with someone. I, I pay 800 there. Um, you know, and then by the time you factor in my diesel fuel, insurance, my phone bill, I'm kind of fat, so I eat a lot. So my food bill, um, you know, my bills every month are well over $6,000. And, um, you know, I, I don't work full time. Like there could be days that go by I don't pick anything up. And I tried to um, work in the shop a little bit, but then I always wind up, I wind up helping people a lot, which, you know, it's good karma. So I wind up doing a lot of stuff for free. Um, so, um, yeah, definitely got to get some land, something that I can, like, I'll live, I'll live in, in the shop. I don't care. I'll get it. What, well, you know, one of my ultimate goals before COVID, I had uh, the truck, that I drive was given to me, uh, that super duty and a 30 foot fifth wheel camper came with it. Um, but it was kind of, it sat out for a while and then there was a lot of work that needed to be done. And it was just more than I wanted to get into at the time. I'm kind of regretting not keeping it and doing it. Uh, 
but I was just going to try to get a piece of land and live in a camper and then build something. You know, I like that idea. I like building shit, man. I have all the tools. I, you know, I did concrete work in my lifetime, block work. Uh, you know, I know pretty much what the codes are and what you need. Uh, I got transit levels. I can shoot the grade. I got all the concrete finishing tools. I got all the block mason tools to set block and stucco and framework, everything. I've done it all. Um, hello from New Jersey. I have family in Florida. Well, that's funny. Shannon, I'm actually from New Jersey. I got family in New Jersey. I was born in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Grew up out in a little town called Mullica, kind of out in the country. Um, so, yeah. Say what's up to all my Jersey peeps. Where's Rockstar Steve? Steve's uh, working on a car. He had to replace a starter or something. He does a lot of uh, mechanic work on the, you know, for himself or whatever. Australian burnout cars. <laughs> what are we doing today? Uh, we were micro scrapping. Dude, I love those Australian burnouts. Like, um, I did mention Cletus McFarlane. He went over there, took uh, Toast. He has a car named Toast. He took it and did some uh, Australian burnouts. Those guys are crazy with them things, man. He's got, um, I think it's Killer B. It's a burnout car. Like a huge blown motor on it, just shredding tires. That's crazy. Nice aluminum heat sink for LED projects. Yeah, you know, sometimes I might, I, I think maybe I should keep this stuff. Um, but man, that's extruded aluminum, man. <laughs> I got a whole pile of it on a trailer out there right now. It, it's hard for me not to just send it to the scrapyard. I love how Derek laughs every time he says the word safety. <laughs> yeah, we, we keep it safe around here, man. And I think I in that West Coast video, I was mentioning that, you know, in my last job cutting concrete, I held all kinds of uh, not uh, what I had all kinds of security or um, safety training. Um, I know better. <laughs> I definitely know better. Uh, so, um, where are we at here? Flathead screws are a pain in the ass to deal with. Yeah, that whole thing was literally just like mainly all flatheads. Uh, uh, good night from Brazil. See you, dude. It's awesome that people. Um, People from all over drain the capacitor before it zaps you. So that thing's been sitting around here for a month or so. I doubt it had any energy in it. I've, I've never been actually zapped, but I have cut through some of those HID lights, cut the wires off the capacitors and seen sparks. Matter of fact, man, when I, when I do some of those on site retrofits where I'm there with the company as they're taking them down, a lot of times, those lights were literally just on and the transformers are even too hot for me to handle. Like I, I got to wear gloves. Um, and, um, I've never been shocked by them. You know, I'm sure there, there could be some, uh, stuff going on. Derek's pick and save hardware barrels. Yeah. I should sell it by the pound, man. I literally have, there's a 55 gallon drum and I got a bunch of metal, like five gallon buckets. I don't even know what they were from, but full of nuts, bolts, washers, all kinds of hardware. Home Depot just raised their credit card APR to 29.99. Damn. See, that's why I ain't got credit cards, man. I pay for everything in cash. Yeah, credit, uh, Adam, credit cards are tools of Satan. Yeah, definitely. What voltage to activate the contactor? That's a good question.
the coil 115 to 125 volts DC. Wow. I probably should have kept one of those transformers. I'm going to need a rectifier. Let's see. Is that coming in? That's probably an expensive part if you had to buy it. Who knows how much that whole thing could have been. Let's see what we got here. Most RTUs I broke down use 24 volt, but a few use 120. A potentiometer. Shout out from Green Bay, Wisconsin. What's up, Charles? Uh, those look like heat dumps. Hello from Missouri. I have access to a bunch of wire for a long time. What would you charge for a blueprint to build your biggest wire stripper and motorized splitter? Um, you really don't need blueprints, man. I mean... For what you're, it's going to cost to build, you could just go online and buy one of those machines. Like the machine that I got, I only paid 250 bucks for it, used from one of my customers, and it was in pieces. I had to put it back together and fix it. But you can get a similar machine for like, I think, $1,300 to $1,500. It's going to be a Chinese version. Um, I do, one of my goals is actually build my version of that because there's a lot of stuff on that and even the ones that you can buy. Like uh, down in Miami, they just got a brand new Blue Dog, which is basically a four roller system like this, but they have the one that has the additional single V with the blade on the other side, you know, so it's, Kind of like my setup, how I have the two machines side by side, but it's all ran off the same motor. And theirs is only <laughs> theirs is only 110, and it's a nice-looking machine. They only have um, adjustments on the top. Uh, I like this one, man. Like, most people don't – I've never seen anyone else adjust the bottom – but it does make a difference. There, There is a plus to being able to adjust those rollers up. Um, but you can buy, I think even that Blue Dog is probably like $1,500 or $1,800, something like that. And it'll get the job done. Ain't going to be as fast as this machine because this machine's hopped up. You know, I went from a 110 three-horse motor to a five-horse 220 motor. So it's no no BS, man. It's not going to lag, and it just sends the copper through. And I think I might even have a different size pulley on it. It spits out about 200 feet a minute, way faster. The, the one in Miami, compared to this, is like slow as molasses, those new machines. Um, this thing really sends it. But I don't know, man. Um, I, I really want to actually build a proper one. One that doesn't have all the issues that I have with this with uh, the wire kicking out and uh, the rollers moving back and forth. And I, I'm going to make it so that you can speed it up without a variable speed drive. Now, I could easily just put a variable speed motor on there with a knob. Like I've seen uh, Shark Scrapper has one of those strip meisters with a variable speed, uh, which is cool. I like that. That company... <laughs> Funny thing, that company actually contacted me, wanted to send me one of their big boy, like they have a bigger one, a couple, I think a couple sizes bigger than the one Shark Scrapper has. And, uh, you know, they wanted to send it to me and, and have me test it. And I told the guy, I'm like, hey, man, have you really seen my channel? Like, you know, I, I if you did send it to me, I'm going to compare it to what I'm already running. And what I'm already running is going to clown your stripper, you know, your single roller. That's the one thing I have, uh, uh, the issue I have about those type of strippers is it's a single 
single roller. Wow. I must have been slinging, depopulating that board. I was slinging stuff. I got, I, I scratched my, my new Yeti. Um, but I told him, I'm like, dude, you know, if you did send me your wire stripper, I would have to do a review and, um, try, uh, uh, compare it to what I'm already running. And it's just not gonna, you know, the single roller you, as you feed it through, you have to peel it. Now my machine, sometimes I still have to peel it, but I'd say 80 to 90% of the time I can dial that machine into when I feed it through, you're picking up just clean copper on the backside. It's 100% separating the copper. Those single roller machines don't do that, man. You're still pulling it off, which it's just not, I, I declined his offer to send me a wire stripper. Um, let's see here. I have family in, I don't even know what that is. Silverlicious? Is that like Canada? You ever get into uh, electrocuted, putting copper coils in the ground? To grow massive plants. Oh, electroculture. Hey, um, matter of fact, my editor is into stuff like that. And I'm going to try to get them to come on my other channel. So maybe one day you'll actually see who's editing the videos. Um, but they, that's part of what they do for their full time job. And yes, uh, electroculture, um, I really like that stuff. And um, earthing, grounding. And, um, like if I had my own, I can't do it here, but if I had my own property, I'd be all over that. I'd be growing all my own food and I'd be doing, um, what do you call that? Uh, aquaponics where you have a pond with fish and you filter the water through your plants. That's another great way. Um, let's see. Using zero point bolt to the mo. I don't know what that is. What's up, homie? Ryan Hoffman. 1.2 gigawatts. <laughs> I'd like blueprints for your transformer splitter and your biggest wire stripper. What would you charge? Um, I don't know. I mean, honestly, if you just watch some of my videos, I actually did a video where I took that wire stripper apart. You can kind of just watch the videos and I mean, I'd be able to discern everything and make my own version of it. I guess you would need. Um, like the sizes and diameters and all that stuff and where to get the blades and the sprockets and stuff like that. I'll I'll look into all that because all that stuff I'm going to want to look into for building my own. Um, I don't know what I would charge. I, I'm not like a blueprint guy. I literally just make stuff off the top of my head. I look at a pile of scrap. I try to build everything out of scrap. I hate going and buying steel because uh, it's so expensive. But I'll look at what I have available. The goal I want to achieve, and I kind of work out how I'm going to get there through what I have on hand, you know? Uh, yeah, hatchet time. <laughs> I love that hatchet. <laughs> um, forget gloves, you should be wearing body armor. Yeah, that would suck if I lost a finger live on YouTube. <laughs> uh street tips would uh know what to do with that i had a bug flying around me um yeah i didn't make a mess it's garbage now throw it in with the shred <laughs> that's where it was gonna go anyway For the amount of time you have in that whole mess, I've seen you do much more productive things. Yeah. 
this was just, uh, you know, I just wanted to show me taking that thing apart. It's something that I've never seen anywhere else. And uh, it's like micro scrapping, you know, um, not something I do every day. Now, if I had a bunch of those, you know, I could sit there and get them apart and make some money. Like all of that pretty much was non-ferrous. There's a nice, nice chunk of copper there. I could probably, if I had to do a couple of those, I can get it down to a sellable point in 30 minutes or less, you know. Um, ben Herrera. Oh, wow. I almost thought that said Brandon Herrera. That's another YouTube channel I watch. Um, kind of subject for your other channel. Will the war in the Middle East shoot scrap prices up? Hmm. I don't know. But war is definitely a topic, uh, topic I want to um, get into because um, we, we shouldn't be at war with anybody for any real reason. It's the people that are calling for war. They're not the people out there fighting. Um, you know, it's a good way to get your most patriotic, strongest men people that would actually defend the country to just slaughter themselves, you know, slaughter each other. Um, yeah, I'm not a big fan of war. I just shaved my beard and I feel like less of a man. <laughs> Dude, this guy really wants blueprints to my wire stripper yeah man i just kind of cobbled that thing together who is the guy you called the landlord we never see him anymore no he's not my landlord anymore and um the reason you don't see him is because the dude basically stole all the steel i had set aside for my granulator and the, the uh stator wrecking machine um, and some other stuff. When he moved out of here, he wound up taking some of my stuff with him. Just kind of messed up. Ever listen to Blue? I don't even know. B-L-O-U? I don't know who that is. I might. I Man, I listen to all kinds of things. Um... Oh, Blues by Roy Gallagher. Rory Gallagher. I like blues. We listen to everything in the shop. You know, I'm here all day listening to music. Man, I can't just have the radio on because if you listen to the radio all day, you're going to listen to the same songs in the morning. You know, I work maybe sometimes 12, 15 hours. You'll hear the same songs at the end of the day. And then tomorrow you'll hear the same shit. I call it tired tunes, man. So you got to keep it, keep it rotating, man. All different genres. I can make you merch, shirts, and etc. Really? Um, I'm not looking for some cheap stuff. I want like high quality shirts. Years ago, when I started my company, I had shirts made, and I I spent extra money. On having nice cotton shirt. Now, some people don't like cotton shirts, but I, I can't have that fake rayon and uh, what's that, polyester. I can't have that stuff, man. Um, I like natural stuff. Um, I should sell some linen shirts and some silk shirts. <laughs> uh, that's the song by Bad Penny. Okay. I'll send you an email. Yeah, the e you can uh, always email me, uh, projectshopfl at gmail.com. How many miles on the 7.3? So the one I'm riding now, I think I'm at 200 and... 
fifty or sixty thousand. And the one I have in the back has about a half a million on it. I bought it with like two hundred, and I put three hundred thousand on it. No major issues. I burned used motor oil as fuel most of the time. Used motor oil, transmission fluid, thinned out with gasoline. Uh, dude, I absolutely love your content, but I notice you get sidetracked a lot. Is that because your wheels are always spinning or is it because jobs come up? Oh yeah, man. I'm, I'm scatterbrained, dude. I get sidetracked all the time. Other stuff comes up. You know, that needs to take priority. Um, huh, my brother, what's going on, dude? <laughs> uh, not much, man. Uh, I'm from Woodstown, New Jersey. Cool. I'm from South Jersey. Can I ask, in no disrespect, you keep saying all the things you need that you used to have did. Why don't you have these things running now? It seems like you had it all worked out and sorted out. Um, like what? Some of the things like in my last shop when COVID hit and I, I put everything in storage. Um, I got rid of a lot of stuff. Um, like my granulator. That got ruined because of the guy I got it from screwed it up before I even got my hands on it. And it just it made things worse. It needs a shaft. That's why I ain't running it now. Because if I could put it back together and run it, it's just going to deteriorate itself. You know, it's going to tear itself apart. We like the metal shredder in the end of your videos. The granulator. Your beard is awesome. <laughs> Thank you. See you scrapping. What's up, dude? Uh, hope everything's all right with you, man. Hey, why don't you do a garage sale thing to sell your extra tools? You can make a lot of money. I guess. Uh extra so there's no such thing just tools that aren't used as often <laughs> yeah that's right man yeah i got a hard time with tools man that's like i probably got a a drawer that's just full of screw i probably have 10 of the same thing and i'm like well man if i break one or two then i might only have like seven then what <laughs> i don't know maybe i'll think about that um, I'm about 30 minutes away from Mullica. Oh, that's cool. Uh, what other scrappers do you watch? Um, so big stacked thumbprint, see you scrapping, um, big country. Um, there's just so many, man. Uh, copper, there's uh, one called Copper King recycling i think uh like i said i'm subscribed to them all if, if there's a uh, someone that made a comment on my video or someone suggested it or i see it in the in the, the thing i'll go check them out and subscribe to them but there's so many of them um i think he, like i said i think you can go to my channel and see all the people i'm sub to they're all in there you know um but you know like me watching scrapping videos, like I, I check them out when I see them, if it's, if it's interesting, but like, it's what I do pretty much all day. And when I want to like take a break from that, I don't want to go watch more scrapping videos. You know, um, I like to see what other people are doing. I like to see the processes they have, um, for certain things, you know, a lot of times I'll Google stuff and, uh, you know, see what they, uh, you know, see how other people are doing the process and uh, give myself some ideas or whatever. Let's see here. 35K subs, subscribers, companies are going to send you loads of cool stuff. Yeah, actually, they already are. I have to. <laughs> I, I probably have four or five videos of stuff I need to review, but here's the deal. 
uh, sometimes they want you to like fill out these forms where you, you're expected to do certain things in a certain amount of time frame. I, I won't do that. If you're going to send me something, I need to actually use it, put it through its paces, come to my own conclusion of whether or not it's worth a shit or not. You know, you're not just going to send me something. I don't care what it is. I don't even care if you pay me. You're not going to send me something and I'm going to be, oh, this is the greatest thing since sliced bread. No, man, I'm going to tell you if it's a piece of shit, if it's worth it, don't waste your time, uh, buy it. Now, pretty much everything that I've been sent, um, unfortunately, is uh, I'm pretty sure all of it's made in China. But I will say this. Um, I really can't say anything too bad about it. They've done what they're supposed to do. And uh, I've, I've been using them. Now, I have one thing you'll see a sneak preview of in, in uh, a, a coming up video. We were trying to do something with it that wasn't like right out the gate. I took this thing out of the box and did something with it that it wasn't meant to do. Um, but it, it kind of worked. And then I tested it for what it was supposed to do, and it worked great. Um, so, but I have to put it through its paces, man. And these people are emailing me like, hey, man, when are you going to put out the video? And I, I tell them, hey, dude, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm using it, you know, I'm not, you're not going to send me something and I have no experience with it. And then I'm going to tell you guys, oh, go buy this product. No, man, it don't work like that way with me. I'm going to be honest with you. I can't do that. I'm not going to, I wouldn't pawn some bullshit off on you just so, you know, I get a free tool or, or something like that. I'll tell you if it's garbage. Um, why do you mess with micro scrapping when there's no money in it? It's tedious. And it, it's a severe time killer. Well, I really don't do that much micro scrapping. If you see my channel, I think I've, I've put out two micro scrapping videos in four years. Uh, most of the time, that stuff finds its way right in the shred pile. Um, but I like taking stuff apart. I like seeing what's in it. Like that thing there, it's very interesting. There's a lot of stuff. And if I can recover stuff like I just did, you know, that's that's worth the time. You know what I'm saying? If I had to go buy them 110 fans, who knows how much they would be? Uh, plus, I made some money scrapping. Like that thing there, there's probably, you know, I'm sitting here bullshitting with you guys. But if I was just on that dedicated to see how fast I can take it apart, I could have made some money with that. Uh, yes, meet the editor. I want... Uh, I want to meet Silverlicious too. Silverlicious, I think that guy lives in like uh, where uh, Las Vegas or something, Nevada. He don't live anywhere around here. I mean, I might be able to get him on. Uh, I don't even know if he would want to do that. If he wants to get on, you know, come on the channel. Uh, the editor, they're local. Um, let's see. What am I listening to on those headphones? I'm listening to myself so I can hear if I'm, you know, how the audio is. It sounds better like if I'm talking like this, I have no idea what you guys are hearing. This is giving me a representation of what, you know, it's coming through on the mic. My last name is one of those made up Polish names. That's funny. I got a... Uh, a Polish name, but I'm not Polish. <laughs> Say hi to Steve. Love your channel. Thanks, Patrick. You probably could fix more appliances by swapping parts. I fixed a microwave and a vacuum by swapping parts. A scrapper is half qualified to fix appliances due to familiarity with the parts. Yeah, I, I you know, that's one reason why I like saving stuff because, um, you know, because I come across a variety of stuff and we'll pull parts here and there and keep them up on the shelf. And, and then one day I'm just like, oh, I need this. And bam, I have it in stock. I don't have to stop what I'm doing, shut down the shop, burn diesel, waste, you know, an hour or two going to a store. 
Um, and if you can just have, it. I mean, I got to take the stuff apart anyway, usually because most, you know, I make a lot of my money on processing scrap rather than just buying it and selling it. Now, tomorrow I'm going, uh, I'm going to be picking up a lot of copper wire and I'm pretty sure this guy stripped most of it. So it's one going to be one of those. I just pick it up, take it right to the scrap yard and make my percentage. But, uh, yeah, I love taking stuff apart. One, I just want to see how it's made, see what the, you know, inner work. And I, I've been like that since I was a kid, man. Like when I got my first bicycle, first thing I did is took every nut and bolt apart. I want to see how it worked. <laughs> um, you can never have enough 10 millimeter sockets. That's funny. We were literally just looking for one um, the other day. <laughs> What trouble were you having when you left New Jersey? Shit, man. I was in all kinds of trouble. I had warrants in three different counties when I left New Jersey. From 14, I was on my own since I was 14, to 19. I, I lived my life. Let me tell you something. I, I'd been through it all. I like how you exercise your Second Amendment. Yeah. We all should. We should all understand that more than we actually. Um, and there's a whole we're going to we're going to get into that on my other channel because there is a. A lot more going on with like over here in America with our Constitution. The original Constitution for the United States is not even applicable to most people, most citizens, if you if you're a citizen. You don't even know what's going on um, with your rights. There, there's there's a whole bunch of um, shady stuff with that, but we'll be getting to that in the other other channel. Hunter K, how are you? I'm good. Awesome channel. What advice do you have for making and building contacts where you buy your large quantities of wire and loads to break down? Um. I've gone on this, over this in my other live streams. I, I suggest, I mean, we're at the end of this stream. I'm going to cut it off here in a minute. Um, in my other live streams, I go into detail more about that and the uphill battle you're going to have with getting electrical contractors as customers because it's not easy. Um, you know, you got to... One, you're competing with every scrap yard in your area. Most of those guys probably have uh, a guy they're already dealing with or have been dealing with for years. So a new guy coming in, um, you know, it's going to be a tough sell. You got to bring something to the table, bring something different. Um, try to either compete with the price or beat the price. A lot of time, I'm lucky enough to, I sell to an exporter. I basically sell to the same people that the scrapyard sell to. So I can compete with them. Um, that That's not going to be the case everywhere. So I, I'm kind of in a unique situation with that. Um, but, man, I, I, I get people comment all the time on the price of scrap. You know, down here in South Florida, where I sell, I get a higher price than most people in South Florida. But then from other states, I get, I hear prices and I'm just like, wow, man, what? That's like the price I get, or even sometimes better. I remember Romantic was always showing prices down there in Texas um, that were the same, if not more, than what I was getting here in South Florida. It's, it's a lot of it has to do with location. And, which I think it's messed up because the Comex exchange is like, that's it. And I always find it funny when people are like, oh, I get down here. We get these, I call them gypsies. They're like, oh, I, I'll pay $4 a pound or, or some ridiculous price. You know, my customers tell me all the time, oh, we had this guy in here trying to buy our copper saying he's going to pay us this. It's like, dude, that's over the Comex copper exchange price. How are they? There, there's just no way they're making money. You know, they're they're bullshitting you. They're gonna rip you off somehow. 
you know. Um, anyway, uh, Shalom from Norway. What's up, Kurt? Hatchet time equals micro scrapping. Oh, yeah. Hello from Rochester. Uh, Travis in San Diego here, longtime sub viewer. Are you going to set up the waste oil system soon? Yes, I've got, I finally got some tanks I want to use. Um, I really wanted to get a centrifuge. And there's a couple companies out there that make really nice ones. I've contacted these people and haven't heard back from them. Um, I might just go back to the way I did it before, which was a filtration system. But the problem with that is you're constantly changing out filters. A centrifuge is the way to go. Now I got that milling machine up and running. I got to finish the lathe. Um, I might be able to just make my own centrifuge. That's the way to do it, man. You're going to clean it way better and not have all the uh, uh, constantly changing out filters. That's one problem I had with the process I was using before. I was constantly changing filters. Um, let's see. I can buy a used four roller stripper like yours for about one third to MSRP, but I'm worried it's a piece of shit. Uh, no time for scrapping, just a bunch of dreams about quitting my desk job and opening a yard. Um, well, if you're going to open a whole yard, that's that's a that's a pretty big dream. Um, if you can get a four roller stripper, man, and well, first of all, do you even have like? Are you getting the amount of copper to justify getting a four roller stripper? Um, but at one third the price, I would almost I would almost get it. <laughs> Maybe you can even just resell it if you're not going to use it. They are working day and night tirelessly to strip us of our rights. They want us all to be slaves to an upper class. You got that right, TJ. Uh, we're going to go over that in um, our other other channels. Any suggestions on what to look for specifically? Look for for what? Uh, this is going to be an awesome year for your channel. You're going to blow up. Thanks for the bomb-ass content. Thanks. I appreciate it. We'd love to see a video of you setting up the waste oil. Y'all, oh, oh, um I am attempting to run it in my 2004 Doramax, but worried the injectors will not like it. Uh, first of all, you got to get your blending down there. I don't know if the website is still there. But there's a website called oilburners.net. I got a lot of good information, to talk to a lot of good people in there. I'm not sure about Doramaxes, but you got to make sure you, you're, you know, because there's different weights on the oil that you might be using. You got to make sure you get it. Right, but I'll tell you this. You know, I was using gasoline, 15% gasoline. I would start out with a 50-50 blend of diesel fuel and waste oil. Transmission fluid is even better than waste oil. Uh, you can almost run that stuff great. But if you, you want to start out slow, man, don't just hit it hard with a high percentage of oil. And then if you keep the diesel fuel in the mix, I found that works way better. And then another thing about the injector, sea foam is your best friend. You want to run that in every single tank, either by the gallon. I was actually talking to the people about buying 55 gallon drums of the stuff for like 800 bucks because of the amount that I was using. But uh, the sea foams will keep your injectors from getting coked up for sure. But you got to make sure you put it in there. If you're running waste oil, mixed with gas do not put any type of diesel treatment stuff that says specifically for diesel fuel the chemicals in it react with the gasoline i had problems with uh it just was it, it like turned the fuel funny and i was blowing massive amounts of white smoke and basically i had to run the fuel out i had to keep filling it up with diesel fuel and run it out 
and get that diesel stuff out of there. Stick with sea foam. I've never had an issue. Um, but I will be making a whole series of videos on that, uh, on the on the building of that. What else we got here? Um, I know there's a lot of gold in the boards, but you have to use chemicals to extract it. Yeah, I don't think there was any gold in this stuff. It looked like silver soda. Uh, what size shirt do you wear? I'll send you some to see which one you prefer. Well, I'm kind of fat. Uh, I wear a double X large. Otherwise, I feel like a you know um, a fat guy in a little coat. <laughs> um, I got a centrifuge from PA Diesel Supply. Yeah, that I think that might be the guy I contacted. Now I don't want one of those small ones. I want the big bowl centrifuge. I know they make the little ones that are air powered, um, but I, I want the bigger one. And I'll be able to use that um, mixed oil to run that, um, uh, what do you call that thing, that incinerator. Probably just going to wind up keeping that thing uh, or modding it, you know. I want to take those blocks out and flip them this way. It's a huge, I mean, the thing's massive. It'd be perfect for dropping big boy crucibles down in there, melting like 200 pounds of copper at a time. I heard a guy saying that was going to be a problem to melt that much copper, but I'll put four burners in that bitch and fucking crank it up. Well, excuse me. I, I try not to curse, but stuff happens. I respect a heavy hitter like yourself that knows his shit. Too many jackasses in the industry. <laughs> uh uh my bluntness is hilarious man i try to keep it real i ain't i ain't on some fake stuff man um what's my other channel it's called the free human project i'll actually be doing a i gotta reshoot the video but i'm, I'm gonna be dropping a video this week and i'm gonna probably doing a lot of live streams i might just go on there and do a bunch of live streams throughout the week um I'm not fat. I'm husky. <laughs> uh, going to bed, working AM. All right. Thanks, Shannon. All right. Well, I think that's it. Um, I think we're beyond. Yeah, we're 220. All right. I'm going to call it here. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody that uh, joined the stream. If I didn't get to your comment, I'm sorry. Um, I'll be doing more of these live streams. Like I said, I pay like $49 a month for the stream yard thing so that I can, you know, I could just stream off of YouTube for free, I guess, but I, I like to be able to do the, the different things and I want to bring people in on the streams next time, maybe. So, uh, I'm going to work on that because, uh, I'd like to, you know, get you guys on here and, um, you know, make it worth paying that $49 a month. Uh, every time I do that, I'm like, okay, I'm going to do some more streams. And then I just, I just don't, but uh, we're going to knock some stuff out now. Now that we're getting back into the swing of things for this year, I'm hoping this year is definitely going to be a, um, a good year for the channel. Um, so we'll, we'll see. Got a lot of cool videos for you guys coming up. Um, Wait till you see, like I said, the the transformer videos that I got coming up. Uh, it's gonna be some some epic content there, man. <laughs> that was a heck of a uh, heck of a uh, two day spree. So, anyway, um, thank you guys for joining. Uh, I will be doing more live streams. I'm gonna find some other stuff. I'm gonna either I'm probably just gonna go buy a hundred foot cord because i'm actually hardwired into my internet for this so i can get there's no lag i hope there was no lag on this um because i want to be able to bring this setup over to the the wire stripping table and the transformer press i'll break them down live show you guys what that's all about and um you know 
we'll uh, knock some stuff out. And next time, I think I'm going to try and uh, schedule the live stream like in advance, let you guys you know more in advance than uh, just an hour before. I, I kind of always just kind of last minute stuff. And um, normally I have Silverlicious. Uh, maybe he's still. I don't know if he's still hooked up to be an admin, but he was on here helping me out last time. Uh, anyway, um, I'm going to wrap it up. Thank you all for joining. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I want to clean up this mess I made with the hatchet. <laughs> There's actually like little bits of scrap on my keyboard here from uh, that shit slinging everywhere. So. Uh, on that note, have a great night. I hope you all um, have a great week and uh, we'll see you on the next one.